In this video, I'm going to show you how to transfer data from one QuickBooks file into a brand new blank QuickBooks file. Now, there are all sorts of reasons why you want to do this. Uh, sometimes your data could be corrupted or sometimes you want to be selective about the data that goes into the new file. And I'll quickly show you how to, quote unquote, be a little bit selective with it, but it does require a lot of uh, work in Excel. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and open the file that I want to transfer the data from. The next step, I have to go to a hidden menu inside QuickBooks in the help menu. I'm going to click on the help menu. Then I'm going to click on about QuickBooks. Then I'm going to click alt control D like dog and B like boy. So alt control or control alt DB and then you click anywhere in the logo. It's going to immediately hide. We're going to click on the help menu again, and then we're going to see this menu that says tech support. This is a hidden menu that only the tech support people are supposed to know. I can't even remember how, how I stumbled upon it. I think I read a website somewhere and, uh, and I discovered through it that there's some uh, really cool features that uh, you can use in here. The only ones I really use are the export features. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on export and then I'm going to click on export lists. And then I'm going to select all the lists that I want to export. And the reason why I do this list export instead of the regular standard list export is because it includes payroll items and payment template list. So that's actually uh, useful to bring as much uh, information as possible. So I'm going to click on OK. And then I'll click on OK. And then we're going to call this um, All Lists. And then I click on save. That usually takes about a minute, sometimes even less, and that's it. So I exported all this. Just to give you some context, uh, what that looks like is, let me open up that file real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that in Excel just to give you an idea what is it that I just exported. So I'm gonna open a blank Excel file and just click and drag that IAF file into it. And this is what it is. It's basically your entire database of accounts, items, uh, customers' names, vendor names, all that stuff uh, in one IAF file ready for uh, import. So that's what that file is. And I'm done with that. Now when I click on the help menu, go back to tech support, then I'm going to click on export, and then I'm going to click on export time activities. So I'm going to click on export time activities, and then we're going to call this time and then I'll click on save. Then I click OK. So let's take a quick glance at what that looks like. And that basically is, uh, it's almost the entire list plus timesheets. Um, so we'll take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna bring that time up here. And it's very similar. It brings the accounts, it brings item names, but it does bring um, timesheets at the end. So I'll bring uh, the timesheets as well. And then we're going to click on help, tech support, export, and then we're going to click on export transactions. We're going to call this all transactions. And this will take an hour or two. Right, this is going to take a while. So you literally just click save, go have coffee, and come back. So in some cases, this could take five minutes, two minutes, really depends on how many transactions are there in your file. My file wasn't that big, so it only took a few minutes. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to take all the transactions, bring that over, and then you're, you're going to see again uh, items, names, and then you're going to see all of these transactions in there. So you're going to see tons of transactions in there. And that's basically your entire uh, general ledger. Now, if you wanted to exclude some things, you can go in here and you can pick and choose the ones that you don't want. I mean, it is going to take uh, quite a bit of work uh, to get through these. And in some cases, you really won't uh, be able to. It just, it just won't. Um, so it, it could be a hit and miss uh, situation. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And I'm gonna go to File, 
close company file. I'm going to create a brand new blank file. So we're going to create one, we'll call it new blank. And then click on create company. close this window okay so I got a brand new file I don't have any information I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, create a profit and loss and a balance sheet so there's my profit and loss and there's my balance sheet right so I got no information whatsoever I'm gonna go ahead and start importing my file so I'm gonna go to utilities import IAF file and then I'm gonna start with uh, all this click on open That usually takes a few minutes depending on how, how big your lists are. If you have thousands of items, obviously that would take a lot longer. Okay, then I'm going to go to File, Utilities, Import, and then I'm going to go to IAF and then select uh, the timesheets. Perfect. I'm going to do the last one, which is going to be the transaction. So utilities, import IIF, and click on all transactions. And again, this could take five minutes or two hours, depending on how big uh, your company file was and how many transactions you had overall. Then once it's done, I'm going to click on all and then all. So I can see what these uh, reports look like. And the information is not always 100% complete. Um, so you're going to have to compare the two files, see what's in there. Okay. Here we have a whole bunch of information, bunch of information. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the second company file at the same time so I can compare them. And we can see exactly uh, what is it that came and what is it that didn't come. Opening my second file now. Perfect. Let me put the two uh, QuickBooks files next to each other. I'm going to put the old file on the right on the right side and the new file on the left side. And let's just start with the profit and loss report. So let me pull up the profit and loss report and we'll do all dates. And then let's go on the right side, company financial profit and loss report and all dates. And we're gonna see, look, our revenue was exactly the same. So that's great. Um, but then it gets, things start getting a little bit hairy when it comes to inventory and cost of goods sold. See, that wasn't uh, perfect. It was close, not perfect. Um, and then we're going to go down to expenses and see what those look like in compared to the old file. And there certainly is a difference here. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, collapse these reports a little bit so we don't see uh, the sub accounts to see if we can uh, appreciate it a little bit better and sort these by amount. We sort them by descending order. And then I'll do the same thing on this other side. Collapse, sort by descending order, and then we'll know, be able to compare one with each other and see what the difference is. So there's a difference in payroll, it looks like. So the old file has, has payroll information, wages, and the new file does not, or has a lot less, yeah, obviously. And the main reason is, is that you cannot import payroll checks. That's just not something that you can do. So it's not an option. So obviously uh, payroll is out of the question. Uh, payroll, payroll didn't import. Although the file itself contains the payroll transactions listed, payroll didn't import. But that looks like it's probably about it. Um, and, and there's certainly a difference between the cost of goods sold. So that would also leave me to believe that there may be a difference in the balance sheet on the inventory account. So let me close the two. Close that and close that, and we'll run a balance sheet. 
let's run a balance sheet for all dates and then we'll do the same thing with the old file balance sheet with all dates okay and bank accounts are way different so obviously that's an issue there uh, and then our accounts receivable is the same so at least it's really good at bringing invoices it looks like this is a perfect process for bringing invoice when we look at inventory for example that's certainly all over the map i don't know what causes this so obviously i don't have a good solution for it but uh, in terms of bringing the invoices i did a pretty good job and then when i look at my other stuff like fixed assets see that came in perfectly and then i'm looking at accounts payable and accounts payable was off as well so wonder what that is not really sure um may maybe bill payments don't come in let me, let me check yeah that's what, that's exactly what it is um bill payments don't come in so so bill payment checks don't come in and payroll checks don't come in I i'm gonna have to do some exploring to figure out exactly what else doesn't come in and do some real investigative reporting on on what that is but all those uh bill payment checks which i'm gonna just filter these real quick um by transaction type just to see what they are so let me go to bill payment so that's a total of seventy-five thousand. my bank is probably off by that amount let's see uh seventy-five thousand. i mean sorry five thousand in bank okay so it wasn't all of it <laughs> so um so bill payment checks is one of them the other one could also be payroll so i would say between payroll bill payment checks and maybe some other errors um so it's not a, it's not a perfect system uh for sure it's like this is this was not designed for this purpose at all this is something that i stumbled upon upon but at least we know that for the invoices it's pretty good and that's one of the area and bills invoices and bills is pretty good so that could be an area where um where you use this tool for but it'll probably require you to open up the the iaf file in uh in excel like that and go in and run some filters and maybe just just bring in the, the invoices or just bring in uh, the bills type of stuff because it looks like there were some transactions that didn't come in. So hopefully this was helpful.